Hey, we're out here looking at dandy little pocket pistol. It's a Remington RM380. Now, we did a video on this back a few months ago. I had shot one. It was a pre-production model out at Gunsight. This is now a production model made on a tool in Huntsville, Alabama. They've already made a bunch of these things. And by the time you see this video, they're readily available in your stores. Uh, they've been uh, producing them in Huntsville for a while now. And they're, they're shipping them out now. So you can get you one when you see this video. A few uh, features about this. It's unlike most of the pocket pistols on the market. Uh, it's about the size of this Ruger LCP. It's pretty much the same size and weight. But this has, instead of a polymer frame, the Remington has an aluminum frame. has a stainless slide with a black coating on it. Uh, has a 2.9 inch barrel. Got a good barrel length for a little 380. Come with two magazines. They're six shot magazines. One has this finger extension on it. And one has a flush base plate for a little more compact carry. Um, the gun .95 inches wide. It's hammer fired. Got a real smooth trigger pull to it. And the uh, slide does not have to reset the hammer for it to work. The trigger pull on mine, they spec it around 10 pounds. It feels more like seven. Measures about nine on, on my two scales that I use. But it's so smooth that it feels a little lighter. So it's a uh, trigger pull. It's uh, pretty easy for anybody to operate, I think. <clears throat> the uh, mag release on it is ambidextrous. Now, I've, I've always used my trigger finger to release a magazine uh, on a pistol that has the mag release behind the trigger guard. Worked just well for a right-hander if you want to do that. Most right-handers on a gun this size reach around with the thumb and release it, but it's easier with a trigger finger, I think. But, good little pistol. Works really well. We'll show you a few features of it. It's got a, a nice trigger guard on it. The uh, the grip panels on it are a polymer, so they can be replaced if you want to uh, choose some other kind of grip panel on it. It takes down real easily. This little pin slides out the hole right here, and we'll get to something about that in a few minutes, about that pin not having to be pushed to come out. But the, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But the grip feels real good on the hand. It's a, uh, just the right thickness. It's smooth on the back so you can get it, uh, get your hand on it when you're pulling out of your holster. Which, uh, speaking of that, got a couple nice holsters. This one's from Crossbreed. It's a super tuck. It uh, goes inside the waistband. One of the most comfortable inside the waistband holsters I've ever worn in my life. Uh, it's adjustable for the tilt, the angle of it by moving uh, these retaining clips up and down and the height and depth that it uh, rags on your body. But it fits really well in here. Comes out quickly. If you prefer a pocket holster, Recluse is making pocket holsters for these. You can wear it in your pocket and it keeps the, uh, keeps the pistol from turning around in your pocket. Keeps wearing your pockets out. Looks just like a wallet from outside if somebody's looking at it, but I think nobody will because real low profile and that's available from Recluse holsters. But we're going to shoot the gun a little bit. So far it's worked really well. Everything I've tried in it from a, a regular ball ammo. We got some CCI blazer brass ball. Run a bunch of that through it. Got uh, three different plus P Corbon logs. Got the new Ruger uh, ARX ammo in here. That's that uh, stuff from Polycase. Real lightweight bullet. 56 grain bullet with almost no recoil. Works well in there. Uh, got some Remington ammo and some uh, Barnes ammo. It all works well in this little pistol. And, and the pistol runs good with the... Uh, the brass uh, practice ammo, the ball stuff that's cheaper that you can buy a lot cheaper than you can your high performance hollow points. Uh, for carrying, I suggest you pick a good hollow point that works well in it, stick with it. But for practice, the ball ammo works just great. Or the new uh, the ARX polymer copper ammo, non expanded, it works just great. We'll shoot a little bit, show you how the recoil handles. I want to stress once again this is a production pistol, they're in production now in Huntsville, Alabama. And they're shipping to your dealer. So check it out. You can get one whenever you want to. It's available at your local dealer. MSRP on it is $436 right now. Uh, for that, you get uh, you get the, the case, the cable lock in there, two magazines. You get both magazines, the flat base and the uh, extended base in your magazines. But we both got the same capacity. So either one you want to carry or carry one for a spare and one in the gun is just fine but it's good shooting little 380 they've made it right it feels good operates great and uh, we'll show you how it works
video. One thing I have noticed on this, this little magazine is long enough to, for a 9mm. They got it blocked for these 3 8 just mag body. I'm wondering if maybe later they might plan on a 9mm on this. Like I said in the earlier video, they don't tell me nothing. But the, the mag body is long enough, and that's because this was uh, adapted from uh, the 9mm. This is the old Robar design. They, they purchased a design from Robar and made a good little 380 out of it. Don't know if I have any plans for a 9 on it or not, but in the 380, it's a dandy little pistol. Another feature of this, um, the slide does lock open. It's got a real slide lock on the side of it right here, so it locks your slide open on the last shot, you know, when you empty. It's got a six-shot mag uh, for carrying it. I'd, uh, chamber one, first input, six in it, give you seven total. But it's a good shooting little pistol. I shoot some 90 grain ball ammo before in here. Now I'm going to shoot some of this lightweight 56 grain ARX ammo. Uh, this, this stuff has a light recoil, it really gets there fast. It runs pretty quick out of this, and it's uh, very effective ammo. Here's what I was talking about on the pin on the side. You retract the slide slightly where your pin lines up. You can tip it over and use that pin to fall off. It's got a little oil sticking in or anything. There's a place on the other side where you can put a small Allen wrench or, or straightened out um, paper clip, something like that, and poke it out. But you don't have to do that. Uh, it's made where it'll tap out. Some people are concerned that if, if you're shooting with it on the side at all, that that little pin will fall out. Well, it ain't falling out like this, and it can't fall out when it's running. And the reason is, um, somebody that's highly educated and smarter than me figured it out, th that uh, pin's only lined up with that hole in the slide for about 24 ten thousandths of a second that it could fall out and it can't do it. But there's gonna be people who say maybe it can, so for those that have never shot the pistol but are still absolutely sure that the pin's gonna fall out, I'm gonna shoot it with it on its side. I'll be shooting right handy because if I turn it the other way, it won't make any sense. But We'll shoot it. If the pin falls out, I'm bone. If not, uh, it'll run really well. And I know the pin's not coming out of this way. We'll run another mag through there. That pin cannot come out when you're firing a weapon, so that's a concern. Nobody needs to worry about it. It's going to run very well. By the way, this thing runs well on the side. It just does it does uh, straighten up. So if you're, you know, you want to be a thug on the streets and a bad guy, you just hold it on the side like you do on TV and have at it. But if you want to shoot it normally, in any condition, that pin's not coming out. Another thing I want to be sure and show you here, because it's very important to me, is to a lot of people, is having a good laser. Especially on a pocket gun, something like this, that it's, uh, even though this has got good sights on it, they're hard to see at night. They're black. It starts to get dark. I can't see the sights. Most people cannot in low light. And uh, the laser, Crimson Trace already has these ready to go on there. Crimson Trace is a dandy laser. What I like about it, it activates when you grab the weapon. You don't have any switches to flip or anything like that. They might slow you down. But in poor lighting conditions, this Crimson Trace laser gets me on target. Probably going to be a lot more accurate than I otherwise could just trying to see the sights or point shoot at night. You know, a lot of people say, well, I can point shoot. A laser's a gimmick. That ain't true. I can point shoot too. But if I'm having to shoot somebody that's maybe dragging off my granddaughter, putting her in a van at 25 yards, I want every advantage I can get. And, and uh, with this, I can put my shot where I want it to go. I put the laser on target. That's where the bullet's going. So it makes it really handy. It adds almost no weight to the weapon, no bulk to the weapon. You will have to modify your holster to fit it, but that's not a problem. There's holsters available to use the laser on there, or you can modify one you got. What I do a lot of times on a Kydex holster, I put that thing in the oven a few minutes, jam the gun in it, and you got a holster. You fix whatever you want, or use a heat top. A little heat gun on it works really well, but the laser really helps me. I like it, and I love the Crimson Trace lasers. And uh, this laser grip fix on there, eggs no bulk, eggs no weight, works really well. And uh, they're available now from Crimson Trace. in a 
factory go blind. <laughs> Try to see them little bit screws. <laughs>